People of the internet, tonight we are debating, does science suggest an intelligent designer? By the way, welcome to Modern Day Debate. We have T-Jump crossing swords with Taylor. Uh, they will each have 10 minutes of opening statements, followed by 60 minutes of open discussion, and then 30 minutes of Q&A. Uh, T-Jump has graciously decided to go first, so uh, I will let him have his uh, first word, and then we will kick it over to Taylor. So, T-Jump. All right. Uh, when comparing any two hypotheses, in order to figure out which hypothesis is the more likely to be true, uh, you make testable predictions. You say, if my hypothesis is true, here is something we will discover in the future. And if it's discovered, then that's evidence of the hypothesis. Uh, the only one in this case, the only hypothesis to actually do that is the non-intelligent design version. The naturalist hypothesis is the only one that's ever made novel, testable predictions that have come true. Intelligent design has made no predictions of any kind uh, and no progress in the field whatsoever. So and they, in the case of the natural hypothesis, there have been literally tens of thousands of these novel testable predictions that have been confirmed consistently without any kind of like error in them whatsoever. And they are extremely precise. So for example, uh, when RNA was discovered and it was found that it could fold like protein, it was hypothesized that some RNA molecules might be capable of making more kinds of RNA molecules, self, self-reproducing replicators. This is something that um, creationists and intelligent design do not predict. They do not predict that the building blocks and the pieces of life could be found in parts anywhere in the world. They say it's too complicated. It's too complicated. But then in the 1960s, we discovered that, oh, RNA can do this. And in subsequent papers, it was discovered that they could reproduce. Um, in 1982, after decades of searching, that RNA enzyme was finally discovered by the Thomas Check of the University of Colorado in Boulder found it in some big technical sciencey sounding word, tetrahymena thermophilia, a bizarre single celled animal with seven sexes. Uh, that was the first major discovery in the progress of the RNA world hypothesis, one of very many. After that was discovered, um, the RNA world hypothesis was developed and started to make more predictions as a good hypothesis should. You'd say, if my hypothesis is true, here's things we would expect to see in the future, then look for those things. And guess what? We started to find more discoveries. Um, for many biologists, the clincher came in 2000 when the structure of protein making factories in cells worked out. This work confirmed the nesting of the heart of those factories is in RNA enzymes. And if those proteins are made by RNA, surely RNA must have come first. Uh, by 2001, this process has yielded an RNA enzyme called R18 that could stick 14 nucleotides, the building blocks of RNA and DNA, into an existing RNA using another RNA template. Uh, a big advance came in earlier this year when Philip Hollinger of the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge in UK unveiled an RNA enzyme called TC197Z, uh, which reliably copies RNA sequences up to 95 letters long, almost half as long as itself. Um, this pattern in progress that was predicted by naturalists that we would be able to find all these different features of what we need in order to produce life from a non-love formula of chemical stuff is predicted by the naturalist hypothesis. We would find all these individual building blocks. We'd find each of the steps one at a time. We don't need to find them all complete at the same time. That's a ridiculous, like no one, no one ever thinks we need that in any field of science. It's not like we need to see literally an earth being formed in the solar system in cosmology to discover the process by which earths are formed. What we need to do is find individual steps of the process happening in the world, and then it's highly likely that it occurred. So each of these steps was predicted by the natural hypothesis. They were discovered by the hypothesis, and there are literally dozens of them. In 2003, Hiroka Suga, now at the University of Tokyo, Japan, created an RNA enzyme that could oxidize alcohol with the help from a cofactor called NAD+, which he used in many proteins enzymes, protein enzymes. Months later, Ronald Breaker of Yale University found that the natural RNA enzyme called GLMS also used this cofactor, which can be, which is a fundamental step in moving from an RNA world hypothesis to a life-based world hypothesis. So the evidence that there was once RNA world is growing even more convincing. Only a few dissenters remain. The naysayers about the RNA world have lost a lot of ground, says Donna Blackman of the Scripps Research Institute in La Jolla, California. Um, and we can continue going down this list for ours. This is a long paper. It's the uh, First Life, the Search for the First Replicator uh, by Michael Marshall, a new scientist. And it goes through all of the different predictions, or many of them, up until like 2011. 
Predictions made and confirmed by the natural hypothesis showing massive amounts of progress in the field. So any intelligent design argument that, oh, it's just so improbable is just a non sequitur. It literally doesn't matter. Probabilities are assessed by taking the limited information we know and see if we can combine that limited information in such a way that it would produce some outcome. But since we haven't discovered everything about the world, our current limited information is just irrelevant. It literally doesn't matter. The only thing that is used to assess which is the better hypothesis is which one makes the novel predictions that before we discover them, which one is making progress in the field. And as I've just demonstrated, we have dozens and dozens of examples of this from the Natchez hypothesis, whereas there is none in the intelligent design hypothesis. So no, there is no evidence of intelligent design whatsoever. There's no intelligence, uh, no, no evidence that an intelligence designer outside of humans exists anywhere in the universe as far as we can tell. And so the only rational hypothesis is that the natural processes we've discovered, which are the processes that would be required to produce life, uh, combine together in such a way to produce life, which is what all the evidence and the consensus in biology and chemistry and natural science of every single academic field concludes. And so to say that there's some kind of evidence of intelligent design, or you'd have to debunk all of the evidence in every academic field pretty much entirely. Now we'll conclude there. All right. Thank you so much, T. Jump. And we'll kick it over to Taylor for her 10-minute opening statement. Taylor, the floor is all yours. So hello to everybody and the primarily atheist audience. Um, I'm expected to be criticized by you probably the whole time. Um, but in general, science is looking for a pursuit of knowledge. Um, this includes physics, theology, biology. Some people tend to forget that theology um, and, uh, and other studies are not a part of science, but that's not true. Um, the biggest questions have yet to still be answered by science and materialism as to how the universe came about and how life came about and how we are conscious. And materialism has reached its limits of understanding our reality. Um, these big, the biggest questions, how did the universe arise? Um, how, did, how are we conscious? And how did abiogenesis happen? Have yet to be fully worked out. And for example, the universe could not have came from nothing without anything pre-existing. So that's a big question still. Yeah, and, and if you do quantum tunneling, something else has to already be present. Um, so anyway, so if things cannot arise on their own without any type of divine intervention, um, it, if things can, cannot arise on their own, then there must have been some type of divine intervention. And we can go through each of these in terms of abiogenesis, in terms of the start of the universe and the Big Bang, where there are significant problems. And most scientists would agree on them. But it's interesting how um, the atheists seem like they know more than scientists. It's very interesting. So that's how I came to my conclusion, based on there not being a sufficient answer for the biggest questions using materialism, that there must have been divine intervention. Um, since my opponents will argue that God does not exist and naturalism is true, I would like to see a, a working hypothesis of in, in a naturalist working hypothesis of how things like life came about. Um, but usually you will probably just spout that I'm wrong without giving any significant explanations. Now, I heard you mention RNA world and um, I, I wasn't sure if you read recently that they actually now have an RNA protein world because RNA world is insufficient in itself. But we can do that in the open discussion. All right. Thank you so much, Taylor, for your opening statement. And we will go ahead and kick it into the open discussion in just a second. But before we do that, I just want to say that I uh, want to let you know, especially if it's your first time here on Modern Day Debate, that we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And we want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. And if you have a question or comment for one of tonight's debaters, fire into the old live chat and be sure to tag me at Modern Day Debate. Super chats will go to the top of the list. And all we ask is that you please keep it civil, attack the argument and not the person as insults will not be read. And that goes for the general discourse in the live chat as well our invaluable moderators are working tirelessly to elevate the conversation so please show them the debaters and each other the, the respect that they deserve by not hurling attacks and insults at each other <clears throat> Our guests are linked in the description below, whether you're listening on YouTube or via the podcast. So if you like what you're hearing, please check them out. Uh, click their links below. Uh, hit the subscribe button uh, as we have plenty more debates coming your way. You don't want to miss that. And uh, with that, we will kick it to the open discussion. Uh, 60 minutes. Uh, I will start the clock at your first word. Sure. So a few questions about what you said. One, you mentioned the RNA plus protein worlds. Like no one thinks that 
all proteins were created by RNA. Like pro we know proteins can come about without RNA. So everyone already knew that. That's not like a contentious statement. I don't know why you, why you brought that up, but it seemed like your main argument was the biggest questions have yet to be answered and there's no sufficient answer for many of the problems. Therefore, God, is that essentially your argument? That there's no sufficient answers. Um, so yeah. let's get back, let's get back to your first question about the RNA. Well, it wasn't a question. That was just a statement. So we, okay. we know as a fact that proteins come about in other ways other than RNA. So nobody thinks that the RNA world RNA creates all proteins. That was. I just, know. I'm just saying. Scientific. Have you heard about the new hypothesis? It's like RNA protein world because the RNA world in itself is insufficient. Again, that's like saying we also need particles. We need RNA plus other particles. Like everyone already knows that. Like no one thinks that the only RNA was the only thing that existed in the universe that created life. Obviously we need other things like energy sources. RNA needs an energy source, it needs heat, it needs oxygen, it needs particles, it needs lots of other things. RNA on its own can't do it. So, so you're, but, but you're, are you saying that they had to, um, proteins and RNA had to be there at the same time or that an RNA created a protein? Because now there's this RNA protein world. Anyway, I was just wondering if you had heard about that. So, because so, so my answer to that was, we already know proteins come about in other ways. So proteins right. were already there, just like particles were already there, just like heat was already there. There's lots of things that were already there. It's not it's not contentious to say there were proteins with RNA. That was uh -huh. that's common. And you mentioned the um the RNA that's self-replicating with this enzyme. Um, in that experiment, did they use uh, nucleotides to get the to form the RNA to self-replicate itself? What? They didn't form they the RNA. They found it. It was already existing in other organisms. They didn't. Okay, so it. they have they have yet to take uh, nucleotides and make a self-replicating RNA. Uh, no, I think we actually have done that, but that's irrelevant. Yeah, I saw the the self-replicating RNA. I, I saw that we used an enzyme for that. Like we have not formed an RNA and got it to self-replicate. Well, how would we form it without an enzyme? That doesn't make any sense. No, we have not started from scratch of the nucleotides to make a ribozyme that self-replicated itself. Well, how would we do that? Would you use micro tongs to stick them together? Or are these going to have well, to use like an enzyme? Assuming, to... it happened, assuming it happened naturally anyway, then we wouldn't have to do very much, huh? Well, no, that doesn't make any sense. But okay. it's irrelevant anyway, to, the, to, the, you... to the conversation. Because again, right. my question, my main question, the one I asked was, mm -hmm. it seems like your argument is there are lots of big questions we don't have answers to, therefore God. Yeah, I mean, we haven't even got to step one abiogenesis so if you're saying step one was wait, wait, go, go back, go back. For, forget abiogenesis forget abiogenesis i'm just just it seems like i just want to focus on your argument here it seems right. like what you're saying is that there are lots of things we don't know yet therefore this the fact that there are lots of things we don't know yet is evidence of god is that i'm saying it's the most plausible evidence and what what do you believe wait, you, wait, you, wait, do you think that materialism what, is the only answer why What's can't the, I ask you questions? I'm, I'm trying to understand here. Okay, you I don't, don't understand. I don't understand. Yes, yes. So um, I, I said that science is giving very insufficient answers to the biggest questions. And therefore, for things like abiogenesis, I believe, and many other scientists believe, that there must have been intelligent design. Now, what do you believe? Well, I, so I'm trying to focus in on your argument because okay, to me awesome. it sounds a lot like an argument from ignorance. Like if I said, okay. um, well, then Bob, I think you're Bob, supposed to, but you won't tell me what you wait, believe. Wait, wait, no, no, I'm, I'm trying. We could to, do cross examination I'm trying, sections. I'm trying yeah, to we like do that. work. Uh, no, I'm I'm happy with this. This is fine. So I'm trying to just go into like what you're what you're saying here a little bit. So if if Bob says that the the next lottery ticket is going to be some number, and Bob gives a wrong answer, Bob is just wrong. Does that mean that I'm automatically right? Does that mean any answer I give is more likely to be true because Bob is wrong? Um, I, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Sure. So um, Bob makes up a number. He says this number is the next lottery ticket number. He's predicting the future. He doesn't know. He's just making up a number. He's okay. wrong. Now, does the fact that we know he's wrong mean that I'm right automatically? Does, it, does that mean that's evidence that I am correct? I'm um, going to make up a number two no. and his number is wrong. Does that mean that, that the evidence of mine is right? Um, no, I'm just going to say no. Yeah. If it's the argument. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. So right. even if science, we can imagine Bob is science. Science makes up a number and is trying to answer these big questions. Even if science is wrong and it doesn't give the correct answers, that isn't evidence that the God hypothesis is right. 
in the same reason, right? Right. And there's no evidence that God doesn't exist either. So we can go in circles all day. Well, it's not a circle. That's, that's literally an argument from ignorance. So the fact that one hypothesis is wrong isn't positive evidence of a different hypothesis. It's not just one hypothesis. It's like um, all of the main questions in life have yet to be answered by materialism. So are you a materialist? Yes, yes. But You're materialist, right. So do you believe in quantum, huh? Well, I, this this is a really right. good line of question I want to go down because it okay. seems like your, your fundamental well, argument is. You too. I have some questions. That's fine. That's fine. But I, I want to. I've already said yes. You can, okay? Well, then I'll I'll say yes to your question about uh, that. I thought of God for ignorance. Um, if if well, you would like me to, if you would like me to, because this is just it's not it's not really getting anywhere. I've well, already that admitted kind of that means things, you lose the science debate. is insufficient for answering questions right. and that's why I believe there's intelligent designer. How yes. else do you want me to say it? Well no, I I want to if that's the way you say it that's fine. That, that just means that's my answer. But that's could, totally fine. Could we means, uh, T jump? Oh, could oh, we oh, at oh, like 45 oh, minutes? Just, can we at 45 we'll minutes just switch to let her do it? I want to want to keep continue on this. So we'll let you do it up until 45 minutes and then at 45 minutes we'll let her question you. If you admit that, then that just means you're you were admitting you're wrong. So so you're admitting that your fundamental argument is an argument from ignorance, which means it's not evidence of anything. So if it's like if I said my fundamental argument is because I said so, like obviously that would just be admitting I'm wrong because I'm using an argument that is provably false. So in philosophy, you don't need to like say that somebody else is wrong. It's irrelevant what somebody else says. Your hypothesis only matters to your hypothesis. So what you would need is you need to say, here's evidence your hypothesis is true. And no matter what any other hypothesis does, that's all irrelevant. So you can't say science doesn't give answers, therefore God. You would need some positive evidence for God that's irrelevant to science. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but I think things like science doesn't give the answers either. So that's your God. Um, and it doesn't give the answers either. And so I, I had a question if you are a materialist. Yes, I'm a materialist. So you don't believe in anything metaphysical? Uh, metaphysics is just what the fundamental Metaphys nature of reality. So metaphysics can include physicalism. Okay. So do you, what, what constitutes something that you believe in? Matter and energy. Matter and energy. Yes. Okay. So what about if it's only proven through mathematics, but we can't like see it or observe it? Uh, well, the only things that can be proved mathematically are abstract concepts, but they don't exist. Okay. So you can't, you can't prove something exists mathematically. You can only give evidence that it exists, a hypothesis. Right. So then what do you feel about, do you believe in uh, dark matter, dark energy? Yes. yes okay. Words. Well, proven mathematically those were observed you just said that mathematics means nothing right because those weren't proved with mathematics those are proved with observations we can literally see them or see their effects okay well then i can argue that we see the effects of god it's great like what with life and consciousness well that's begging the question we want to know why would that be indicative of a god so like if you said we i can see the effects of dark matter and dark energy because dark matter is the thing that's holding universes together with more gravitational force than what should exist in the universe. And so if we look at the universe that has uh, a specific amount of gravitational force and that's greater than the amount of observable matter, we can say, oh, look, it's being held together by something. So, God. I mean, you, I could say that's God just as well as you can say it's dark energy. Well, dark energy is a placeholder. It's saying we don't know what it is. It's something that we don't know yet. That's that's what dark energy means. So it could be God. That's fine. And that would still be dark energy. But the question is, is why think it's God? Why think God explains this more than anything else? Some what, abstract what is, thing that we cannot view or, or see? It's not abstract. So dark dark energy is concrete. It's not abstract. Okay. So... So if you're a materialist, how do you feel about us only being able to observe and work with 5% of the universe? Uh, that means there's a lot of stuff we don't know yet. So is materialism sufficient for answering our questions? Sure. Um, like if we have a model that can explain 5%, that's better than a model that explains 0%. So a model that does explain what we do see 
is going to be better than one that has no evidence. Sure. I don't even think that the 5% is explained because we still haven't um, come to conclusions for things like consciousness. And I don't know if we ever will using just materialism. Do you and think we will? That's nice, but that doesn't matter. So like if we have two hypotheses, mine makes predictions in the future and it gets them right and yours makes none and doesn't get them right, then mine is better. It doesn't matter what percent. So if mine makes a single prediction about the future and it gets it right, that's still better than yours that makes zero predictions about the future. Yeah, I don't know about predicting the future. I mean, somebody could say that, you know, the Bible's predictions came true, you know. But that would be great evidence if it was the case, but I, I know of none of them. Okay, well, I'm not gonna, going to argue um, the Bible here. Um, so, yeah, materialism. It, it, so how then do you think, for example, like the universe got created? Yeah, uh, some there's a natural thing that's always existed called quantum fields and it wasn't created. Quantum fields? What yes. is that? Uh, it's a vector space of different yeah. kinds of things that are fundamental to reality. Okay, so you mean like space time? No, space time is emergent. It's something that came after quantum fields. So quantum field, did this exist in nothingness? It's just always been there? It can't exist in nothingness. That's a contradiction. But yes, it has always been there. Okay. Because I've never actually heard of this theory. So is this like a type of universe or does it does, does it have like a boundaries? Uh, I don't know what you're asking here. So I'm, I'm pretty About sure you have heard of it. Like literally many worlds hypothesis, multiverse hypothesis. Okay, multiverse. Multiverse. Well, those are all, all of them contain one thing at its essence, which is a quantum field thing. Okay. So do you believe that we're in like a big bang cycle or just universes have always existed? Quantum fields have always existed and they created universes. Through what? Through their nature. They, they have fluctuations in their field, which creates a, uh, a parity of a positive particle and a negative particle. And if you create a bunch of those, you get a universe of particles and a universe of antiparticles. Do you know that quantum field is inconsistent with materialism? No, it's not. Yes, it is. This would be news to every physicist everywhere who are mostly materialists. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, pull it up. Okay. Um, I'm just saying, like, you know, the materialistic... Um, how could you explain how how are how are quantum fields inconsistent with materialism because they're material things you can't right. share your screen so the multiverse is actually a type of metaphysics that's sure. what they're that's what they're considered in like scientific literature yeah metaphysics is just the fundamental nature of reality physics right. is if, okay. if, if reality is physical then physics is metaphysics so then um yeah i just like quantum physics in in all the literature I've read is very um, against materialism. How? Maybe I can, because, because in materialism, if you're just saying that, you know, everything that we can see and touch and, and look at, but, but quantum, quantum physics means that there's no real barriers and, you know, it just kind of changed the entire what? game. I have no idea what you just said. So quantum fields are things we can test and we can observe. They're physical things. Right. We know this from the Casimir effect. The Casimir effect is literally a thing we do in the lab to measure quantum fields. They are the quantum fields are literal physical things that literally exist. They're not. I don't understand why you think that literal physical. Well, I things, didn't think that. That's just what I read. Like that's what most scientists would say. No, most scientists are physicalists. Or that's materialists, and they believe in quantum fields. So that's the consensus in physics is majority atheist materialist, majority quantum field. Like pretty much everybody in quantum physics accepts quantum fields as the entire field. The vast majority of them are atheist, physicalist, materialists. I don't understand why you think there's a contradiction here. Quantum fields are physical things. So it wouldn't contradict physicalism. Okay. But like, you know, entanglement and stuff between particles, materialism doesn't really explain that. Uh, neither does God. So, but materialism has a better explanation for it than God does. So, materialism is a better hypothesis. But is materialism consistent with entanglement? Yes. How? 
there's it doesn't create a contradiction. So entanglement is just the fact that two particles, if they're entangled, if one collapses in spin one, the other will collapse in spin two across a quantum field. Information is not transmitted faster than the speed of light, and so there's no contradiction with materialism. So what do you think is making the particles entangled? Quantum fields. Okay. All right. Well, I can pull up the uh, materialist and, and quantum fields, but I'm, I was just surprised that you believed in the multiverse because that definitely does, goes against the materialistic <laughs> ideology. How does it go against the materialist ideology when the proponents are mostly materialists like Sean Carroll? Also, I don't believe in the multiverse. It's just one of the hypotheses. Okay. That's why I was just asking what your, your uh, thoughts on the origin of the universe were. So, I'm saying that I believe that there is a God because this materialistic world, um, this materialistic view does not explain all, close to anything, in, including consciousness, start of life, and the Big Bang. And I was asking you if you can give me an explanation uh, materialistically to, you know, yeah. oppose. A, yeah, okay, well, then go ahead. Yeah, the Big Bang is just a large Casimir effect. So it's the Casimir effect that we observe in a lab, and it happened on a larger scale, and that's the Big Bang. But so d is that from a multiverse? Mm, it could be, but it doesn't necessarily. It's irrelevant. So the Casimir effect is there are fluctuations in the quantum field that creates particles and antiparticles. There are small ones that we can observe in a lab, and they happen at a bigger scale if given a long enough time. So a really big one could happen, and that's the Big Bang. Okay, so you just think they've always existed. Universes have always existed. Qu quantum fields have always existed. Yes. Does that mean universe? Was this was our universe no. the first universe? I don't know, but universes have not always existed. The quantum field has always existed. Those are two separate things. Okay, so you you believe quantum field has always existed? Yes. I believe God has always existed. Sure. Okay. One has evidence, one does not. Does quantum, quantum fields, fields have evidence. Explain the other things that are unknown, such as the start of life. Sure. Okay. Well, the then start, give me start of life is a, that. yeah. The start of life is explained by abiogenesis, which has the best hypothesis in RNA world, which is better than God. So RNA world has evidence. Quantum fields have evidence. Both of those things can be um, make testable predictions, which have been confirmed in a lab. God makes no testable predictions. No, so abiogenesis has not been confirmed in a lab at all. We haven't even got some RNA to self-replicate in a lab without so again, RNA being an enzyme. You're confusing the entire process with pieces of the process. If it makes predictions that we will find a particular kind of RNA that will be able to form corpuscles on clay, and we find that, that's a successful prediction that is evidence. I we did find I, that. Okay. Hold up, hold up. So because we've been able to find that one thing, which we predicted, that's evidence. We don't need to find everything all at once to be evidence. Evidence is the little things that all add up over time. So we have little things, like we can predict individual stages that we will find, and we did find them, and there are thousands and thousands of these. God predicts nothing, and we found none of those nothing. So that's zero evidence for God, and thousands of evidence for RNA world. And so, again, if we have a hypothesis that's built of things that we can confirm and make predictions that have been successful, and a hypothesis that has no predictions, and none of its parts have been confirmed, the one that has made predictions is a better hypothesis. It's like saying, what knocked the cup over? Was it the wind? Do we have evidence of the wind? Yes. Was it a leprechaun? Do we have evidence of leprechauns? No. Wind is a better explanation. Did we actually see the wind actually knock that one cup over? No, but we don't need to because we have other evidences of wind. Right. So in terms of abiogenesis, there is no... Um, you're, you're acting like we have it, fig have it figured out. Um, we haven't even figured out how all of these activated nucleotides were present to form an RNA strain, much less replicating itself. Yes, yeah. but we have one hypothesis. A, uh, we, one of our hypotheses gives evidence and the other one doesn't. So ours gives evidence to give an explanation, the naturalist one, and the God gives no explanation. There's no so evidence for abiogenesis because we can't yes, reproduce it at all. Again, you, we don't have to explain all of abiogenesis to have evidence. We can have pieces, and that's evidence. So, okay, but if I, if I give you any pieces of God or any um, pieces of um, like paranormal stuff, then you will automatically refute them. So if, you, you, could, you keep saying that we don't have any evidence, but you, you, if I were to bring any to you, you would automatically refute them. 
No, if you had like novel testable predictions that could confirm the paranormal activity, that would be great evidence. There are literally parapsychology journals that are dedicated to doing that. Exactly. And how do you feel about those? None of them have successfully made novel testable predictions. Okay. So have you seen the papers about, um, like, uh, I'm trying to find it, but it's like a sense of being stared at or something, or you can tell, like, whenever somebody's staring at you, this was one I ran into last night. And it was replicated by, I think, five different scientists with about 15 different experiments and significant results. What do you think about that one? You can get the sense someone is staring at you by watching a scary movie in the dark. The dark. This is not paranormal. Okay. So you're going to deny any evidence or any uh, any statistical significance from these experiments? Unless you can provide novel testable predictions. Can you provide novel testable predictions? Yeah, I mean, they repeated them. What is the novel testable prediction? That I, the hypothesis was that you can um, tell when somebody is staring at you. What? So... So you you think that uh, your this sensation you get is more likely to be accurately defined when someone is staring at you or something? Yeah, I mean this this is what the scientists found. I'm saying, would you even accept that if I brought you su sufficient evidence for for an experiment such as that one? Sure, if you made the prediction that if the supernatural exists, we have some supernatural gaze detector, and so when someone's looking at you from behind, like a two way mirror or something you're more likely to get the sensation than not. And we could test that and find it. Sure. That would be evidence. Right. Okay. Well, there, there are papers on that. Yes. And they're all false. There's no evidence. Well, then that. you're going to call everything false anyway. So, um, no, no. If you, if you can publish it and get it like academically peer reviewed in an actual scientific journal, that'd be great. You have I that? Mean, it, it, uh, it is like published research. Wh which academic journal is it published in? Do you have, do you have a link? I think it, I think it might've even been a journal. ISNB? Uh, I think it was like, I don't know if there was a parapsychology journal, but I don't know. I haven't looked at the journal. But there is actually, did you know there's PhDs in parapsychology? That's crazy. There's one. I talked to him. His name. Oh, you is, did? That's awesome. Yes. He was the only person who made the PhD and he was the only person who's ever gotten it. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, I just feel like if I did bring any evidence to you, it'd be refuted immediately. Typically, if it's bad evidence, yes, that's going to happen. But if you okay. bring me like an academic paper that's in, I don't know, some okay. big scientific journal like NOS or whatever, I, I can't like just refute that by reading it. So interestingly, on the CIA's website, they have a bunch of released documents. Um, and in one of these, they actually had, okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it, where they basically acknowledge that paranormal stuff exists on the CIA website. And I can... Maybe I can post it in the chat or something. Well, um, the CIA had an entire program dedicated to it. That's where the yeah, the, I know. I stare, this is men who stare at goats, but they, they didn't but, find but they, any use. They, they, they found speak, it failed. No, I'm not talking about that program, but they speak on paranormal, um, paranormal phenomena being real. Well, the phenomenon are the phenomenon are real. We experience things which we think are paranormal. That's that's a thing, but there's no evidence that they are actually paranormal. That's the part that that's why they stopped all the programs because there's no evidence okay. they worked. Right. So on on um, this particular one, it says these miraculous phenomena, and this is CIA. These miraculous phenomena are either uh, a magic, neither a magic trick nor superstitious fiction. They are scientifically verified experimental facts. After several years of research, somatic scientists have already found some rules responsible for induction of paranormal abilities. Right now, Mr. Zhang, who was who they were um, researching, is the only person in China with such abilities. A philosopher said, "Miracles are not against the nature; they are only against our understanding of nature." Obviously, these miraculous phenom phenomena raise challenges, raise challenging problems to modern physics. A series of questions has to be answered by modern physics. Um, so this was um, like on the CIA website, and there's many other ones. There's actually have numerous of them like acknowledging paranormal stuff. So what do you think about that? The very last sentence says it's going to be explained by normal physics, but none of that's not an academically peer reviewed paper. Um, okay, so CIA website's not good enough. The CIA website doesn't say anything about it actually being real, and that was published. Well, they like, said it's scientifically verified, like it's right, this right. has been proven through scientific experimentation. 
remember we can say that the thing that we're seeing is a real thing the assertion that it's paranormal is not no one in the cia thinks that's real if you just contact the cia and ask them they're gonna say no it's not real the fact that they used to publish papers on it and do research on it isn't evidence it's real uh so what you're saying isn't evidence what you're saying is is that the cia did research on this 40 years ago okay and they thought it was real and they thought they were doing experiments to try and figure out it was real and they canceled all the programs because it wasn't real this is so not a program. This is stuff that they have documented. Yes, 40 they years did ago when they were researching. Well. And, 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 and they spoke on some of them actually having good good results. Yes, 40 years ago when they were researching it and then stopped because they all failed. Like, right. This was all debunked. Like This was all proven wrong. Like Every single one of their programs was proven to have zero effect and zero positive results, which is why they ended the programs. Like so they, James, they... James Randi specifically went through and copied all these things with a couple of his students to show that the instructors are idiots and how you can manipulate them. None of this was evidence of the supernatural, which is why all of these programs got garbaged in the CIA. They stopped them all because they do nothing. They have zero effects. Right. So um, on, on their website, it talks about uh, parapsychology, why is it controversial? Um, it remains controversial today, even with substantial, persuasive, and scientifically palatable results for three main reasons. First, the media and much of the public confuses um, parapsychology with sensational, unscientific beliefs and stories about the paranormal. This widespread head confusion has led to many scientists instantly dismissing the field as unworthy of serious study. And thus, there are they are unaware of existing evidence. They're unaware of existing evidence. And then secondly, um, even if, okay, so even if someone wanted to do the evidence, much of the persuasive work is published in recent, uh, the past 10 years, professional journals, thus finding good information is a challenge. So they stopped studying it. And in another one of no, their... no. Again, there's there's a parapsychology. I remember the guy you mentioned who has the PhD in parapsychology. There are literally journals that he works. They they don't stop studying it. They do it today. But I found the paper you mentioned from Mr. Zhang. This is from okay. the China Institute of Atomic Energy in Beijing, uh, received in 1989 and translated into English. This is not a CIA document. This is a document they've intercepted from intelligence from Beijing. It's not actually a study done by the CIA. It's a study done by the China Institute of Atomic Energy. Abstract. The experiment demonstrated that Mr. Zhang, Bao Sheng, possesses paranormal abilities. <laughs> he can make small objects penetrate obstacles. After such penetration, the microscopic structure and properties of the objects do not show any observable changes. So uh, I don't know how, how well you trust China's um, scientific discoveries in the 1980s, but this is not something by the CIA. Yeah, right. Well, if you just look down their website, there is numerous... Um, in, uh, you know, documents on paranormal activities that were documented. Um, and, and they mentioned how the National Research Commission um, told them to stop doing metaphys metaphysical um, research. And I'll, I'll quote that. This is why apparently the prejudice started against um, metaphysical research. There's no prejudice. It's, it's just okay. there's no evidence of it. There, there, there is. It's very, it's like controversial. Even Not in the really. scientific community, you cannot deny that. No, it's not. Again, there's an entire journal of parapsychology. It's not It's not controversial. It's just there's no evidence. Like scientists don't care whether the, the paranormal exists or not. It'd be really cool if the paranormal did exist. If anybody discovered it, you could win millions of dollars overnight and a Nobel Prize. There's no conspiracy against it. We want to know everything that works. There's just never worked. That's the problem. No, they said to stop doing the research on it because it's a waste of money because it doesn't work. Of course, they're going to say that. Like, okay, well, then how are you going to say it doesn't work if we can't continue to research on it? No, because we did dozens of years of research and spent millions of dollars researching it, and it all failed. And so the government is right to say, oh, we've wasted millions of dollars. Let's stop wasting money. Like, we don't need to continue it indefinitely because people do continue it. There are, again, current modern-day journals of parapsychology that exist. And if any of them made a discovery, they could win millions of dollars today but haven't. So the government deciding to end its particular program doesn't mean that literally everyone is banned from doing parapsychology research. Anybody can do parapsychology research. You can do it yourself. You can post it on YouTube. No one is like banning anyone from stop from doing this research. The government just stopped funding their programs because they weren't valuable. They didn't make any money. They didn't make any profit or success. And so of course they're going to stop funding their unsuccessful programs. 
the fact that they stopped funding their program doesn't mean that they've stopped all research for parapsychology from anyone anywhere. So would any research be sufficient for you to understand that um, there is more than just a materialistic world? If you can make novel testable predictions and get them correct, yes. Okay, name one. That name, we could do. name one experiment that would make you believe. Sure. I, I have a hypothesis that there is a non-physical being named Bob. And Bob, when I pray to him, he will give me gold bricks. I pray to Bob, a gold brick appears in front of me. That would be great evidence of a paranormal Bob. How is that testable? It, so if you say, if Bob exists and I pray to him, a gold brick will appear in front of me. Pray to him, do the experiment, and if a gold brick appears, that's a novel prediction of an event we don't expect to occur, and if it occurs, that would be evidence of Bob. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think that anything would... Okay, so if we if we kept researching abiogenesis and we found that there was no materialistic explanations that were sufficient, what would you conclude from that? Well, that's impossible because of the problem of underdetermination. You literally can't research a topic and say it's impossible that this thing could ever do anything. You'd have to have a different hypothesis with positive evidence. So you could say that abiogenesis was a result of an intelligent designer. And in order to see this, we would see, I don't know, um, quotations from the Bible in the genetic code. And if we find quotations in the Bible in the genetic code, that would be evidence of a designer and that would be evidence towards your position. And if you have sufficient amounts of this, that would overturn abiogenesis and be a better hypothesis. But you never have, you never like, you can't research a topic to a point and say, oh, we've researched everything about this topic and know literally everything about it. Therefore, it can't explain X. Like, that's not possible to do. Well, I don't think abiogenesis is a testable hypothesis. We, we cannot get it to work in the lab. We've got very minimal. Um, production. Uh, we've we've we haven't moved very far in the whole study. We're still trying on step one. If you haven't realized, on just getting um, RNA. So if you don't know, the cell, for example, requires much more than just a self re reproducing RNA. If we ever to get that from scratch in the lab, um, and and so RNA, for example, is like it would need to be in an acidic environment. But then you would need to li a lipid to come encapsulate it. Um, then you would need something to fold the proteins. And how did how do we ever get to DNA from there? Um, I, I don't even think that there's a hypothesis or anybody like has clues to solve the problem for how to get to the rest of the cell. Even if we do get step one, which is trying to make RNA. So I, I literally just listed like 10 of them in my opening that literally do this. Again, you, you're confusing having to explain an entire set of a thousand processes uh, and you saying only it's only evidence if it explains a thousand conjunctive processes. That's false. You don't need to explain a thousand different things all at once. Each of those different processes can be explained individually. And if you say individually, the, the way corpuscles around cells could form is if they formed on clay. Would mm -hmm. we discover that? Yes, we literally discovered RNA creating corpuscles on clay. That is the clay on no, RNA. No, we, we were able to stabilize RNA on clay. St stable, I'm not talking about like, stabilizing RNA. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about RNA producing clay. corpuscles, the, the outside of the cell. Can RNA right. produce the outside of a cellular structure on its own without us doing anything? Yes, yes it can. Okay. It does that all the time. So, Giving you the benefit of doubt, let's say that these RNAs, um, let's say these nucleotides can come together to form an RNA molecule. Um, how would that? So, so to clarify, I said RNA already exists. No. RNA forms asking, on the clay. Okay. So, so yeah. the evidence I gave, one of the, the okay. pieces of evidence so, I gave is that we already have RNA. The RNA will then bond to the clay and then form a corpuscle. And, and this is what the hypothesis was. Can RNA form corpuscles, the, the bubble thingy that goes around the cell? Can RNA form that? And if the naturalist hypothesis is true, then we can say, yes, they can form that on their own. Do we find anywhere in nature where they do that? Yes. Yes, we do find it. We find it on clay. RNA on clay does this one process. This one process is on its own. Just this is evidence. It's evidence that this hypothesis was correct because they made a prediction, they've discovered it. We don't need anything else. We don't need the full thousand steps to get to a cell. We just need that one thing. And if that one thing is true, and it, it is, we've discovered it, that's evidence that we're right. 
So in your in your assumption, you're assuming that an RNA is already put together. Like, are you talking about in the experiment or did the RNA assemble itself on the clay? No, the RNA the was experiment. already there. I didn't say I didn't say creation of RNA. I said creation of a corpus. Yeah, well, creation of RNA is a big problem. No, no, it's not. It's literally irrelevant. So what I need is to have evidence of any of the steps, any of the 1,000 steps to get a cell. If I can show they can occur naturally without the injection of an intelligent designer, that's evidence of my hypothesis. I don't need to start at step one. I can start at step 32. And if I can show step 32 can be done naturally with no injection of a designer in step 37 and step 542, each step that I can show can be done naturally on its own with no designer is evidence of the naturalist hypothesis. So I don't need to explain step one. I don't need to explain step a thousand. All I need to do is explain any of the steps along the way. Then I don't need to steps... explain God. What? I don't need to explain God. You don't, you don't need to. I, I'm not asking you to explain God. Okay. Well, y y yes, you yes you have. If you can't explain uh, your model, then I need I don't need to explain mine or say oh we need evidence for it. Well, we definitely need evidence God, for it. God, you're going to refute just like I'm refuting that there is a, a, a working model of how to get a cell from scratch. Well, no one said there was a working model of how to get a cell from scratch. All we said was there are evidence of different steps that can be done naturally. But step so, one is very crucial. That's so nice. how did they get activated nucleotides? Do you think those just exist in nature? I have no idea. Well, that's very important. Because really. an RNA would never form to begin with. So we haven't even got to step one in that no. case. No. Again, so I don't I don't need to explain step one. I can explain I think any of the steps. explain it if you're telling me that naturalism has all the answers. No, it has more answers than God. So if, no, if I want my not. explanation to have no, better... No, God wait, can wait, explain wait, wait. the biggest questions in life, and naturalism can't hardly explain any of them. We can explain our observations through okay, naturalism, how, but not how... Does, how like, we got here. And so. How does God explain the origin of life better than naturalism? In every sense that it could. Such because as? Okay, because I can tell you that God created the cell, and you can tell me, oh, well, we don't need step one. What? Yeah. No, no. okay, so so how did God create the cell? Well, he must have had pre-existing DNA and proteins because they would have needed to be simultaneously um, created and then the cell would have had to been compartmentalized and there's a membrane around that. There's many things that had to be simultaneously created because in the presence of one another that component okay. of the cell will actually disintegrate. How so they did he simultaneously create those things? Huh? How did he simultaneously create those things? The same way he created that the universe with the Big Bang. Which is? A better explanation than yours. <laughs> Magic, supernatural powers. This is God. God powers. Yeah, how did you do it? Wait, wait, Your so, quantum so, field that's always existed? Yes, well, no, the quantum that's field didn't exists. create life. The quantum field created organisms, uh, created matter, and then interactions in matter and how? physics created life. How did, how did quantum wait, field wait, 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 wait. I was trying to, I'm trying to go, trying to go okay. follow a line of question here. So, so yeah. God used his magical God powers yep. to create these things. Is that correct? Is that, is that correct. accurate? Yeah. Okay. Is there any evidence of this magical god power, or is it the same as saying magical fairy dust? Um, that's that's a type of fallacy to try to um, <laughs> make mine sound dumb. But um, yeah, uh, what was the what was the answer again? The fairy dust? Yeah, that's not that's not a valid argument. But no, no the question is 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 there any more evidence for magical god powers existing than there is evidence? For magical fairy dust that just smacks Kaz in the face. Because can magical fairy dust that smacks Kaz in the face create the universe? Yes, it's magical. Okay, well then it can it constitutes God, create universe, create life, whatever you want to call it. I'm not okay. here to debate what God is. Well, I'm not I'm not arguing what God is. I'm asking. You're claiming magical God powers is the thing that created yeah, life. I am. And I'm saying, and well, creating. maybe it was magical pixie dust. And pixie dust is a thing that falls off the back wings of pixies. So it's not your God. It's a different thing. Um, but neither of those have any evidence. They're just hypotheses. We can make up hypotheses, magical leprechauns, magical So you're doing the appeal to ridicule. No, no. Yes, you are. Not. This, isn't, this isn't about ridicule. So the ridicule thing yeah, is Yeah, you're like making the argument look ridiculous. 
which is true, but that's not an argument. So my argument isn't your argument is ridiculous, therefore it's false. If my argument was is your argument is ridiculous, therefore it's false, that would be an argument from ridicule. That's not what I'm saying. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you, how is your assertion that magical god powers did it a better explanation than magical pixie dust? Now, my explanation is better because when I say that a natural process did it, I can then point to the natural process. I can no, then you say because you won't tell yes. me the process. I can. It's physics. But the reason mine is better is, again, because mine makes predictions. It says, if my natural process is true, then we will be able to explain each of these different steps one at a time through natural processes. And, oh, look, we've we've discovered about 500 of them that we can all explain through natural processes. Now, your God magic power thing has not been able to predict any of these. My natural process has been able to predict thousands of them. That's why mine's better. Yours, it seems, has the same explanatory power as magical pixies. It hasn't explained any of the steps, none of the steps in the process. It's just saying some magical thing we have no evidence of. No, I'm saying all. materialism is not sufficient. That's fine, but that's an argument from ignorance. It doesn't, it's not evidence of your hypothesis. Okay, well, your yours is in your hypothesis and your uh, materialistic views are not sufficient. That's how I came. That's how I. Right said that there must have been some kind of intervention. Right. That, that's why I wanted to go down this line of questioning at the beginning, because that seems to be a fundamental flaw in your thinking that I don't, I don't think you, you understand quite. So it's like, if I said there are 10 axles, 10 car axles, and we test the first nine of them and they're all broken, does that prove that the 10th works? Um, no. Right. Correct. So it doesn't matter how bad or broken science is. Science could be one of the broken axles and they could all be broken axles. But the fact but that you science have faith that science will fix it. Because no, science no, 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 not, not going to that not part of the argument. So we can just I'm just going to grant science is broken. We can just say science is 100 percent wrong about everything. That does the fact that science is a broken axle prove that your axle the god axle works um it just means that we need a better explanation and sure. i came up with the explanation i thought in the gaps of god now if you want magical fairy pixie dust and that's fine but your model is insufficient that's that's fine so again one axle being broken is not evidence that your axle isn't broken so so you would need some positive evidence for your claim you can't just say science is a broken axle. Saying science is a broken axle doesn't prove God is not also a broken axle. God could also be broken. So the difference here is that the science axle, it works somewhat. We know science works somewhat, does lots of things around us. It makes lots of testable predictions about the RNA world hypothesis, about different cells and RNA, for, RNA forming corpuscles on clay. It makes that prediction. It makes the prediction that we will be able to find RNA that is self-replicating. And we found it. So all of these things are little bits of the axle that work. Now, there are no bits of the God axle that work. We found zero bits of the no, God there's axle. There's no that bits of God axle that does not work because there's zero things to refute God. Nothing has refuted God at all. Never, ever, ever, oh, ever. Logical problem of evil. But the point here is that if one axle partially works, it, is, it makes novel predictions to explain some things, then that means the axle partially works. So the God axle makes no novel predictions. It means it has 0% that works. Natural Many axle, scientists would agree that materialism is insufficient at this point, and we're going to have to take in other, you know, other, other ways of explaining what's going on. So, for example, with consciousness. I agree. We're going to have to start opening our minds to something else. Well, so again, the fact that one axle is insufficient doesn't mean the other axles are automatically better. So, like so how do you think the problem of, say, consciousness will be solved? Uh, by other natural processes we haven't discovered yet. Okay. So you're putting your faith in, in, in the same uh, materialistic view, right? You think no. materialism is going to figure it out? No, I'm using induction. Induction yep. isn't faith. Okay, so what do you think's going to figure out, for example, consciousness? Materialism. Wow. That's how induction works. A lot, like of, if, a lot of neuroscientists would disagree with you. 
Not really. Yes, they less, would. No, I've actually had okay. many neuroscientists on my show and we've literally asked this question. How many neuroscientists think that consciousness is anything other than physicalist materialists? And it's in the single digits percentages. I literally have the studies on it. Um, I had, oh, what's his name? Julian Mussolino on, who is a neuroscientist who works at Caltech, I think, or some really big college. And I asked him, how many neuroscientists think that the brain has anything or consciousness has anything to do with other than the brain. He said, literally no one I know. It's a single digit percentage. No one in my office thinks that. No one in the office I work with thinks that. It's nobody in the field, essentially. That's not true at all. You can, you can go to my conversation with him where we literally have the studies posted. No one in neurology thinks that. A lot of consciousness. people agree that we need a major conceptual re revolution to understand things like consciousness. Sure, but they all are physicalists and materialists. They feel, they still think it's going to be material. They don't think it's a new thing. Okay. Well, materialism, many scientists would agree, is not going to answer the biggest questions. And by the way, you know, we we still only apparently understand only five percent of the universe. So there's still so much out there to understand, and that just goes to show us that that materialism doesn't. I mean, there. It doesn't really answer the questions. It just doesn't. And, and I don't think we're getting any closer because see the way science is going is in a direction to where the more we're learning, the more we're learning, for example, how complex a cell is and what even the simplest life form would have needed. And it makes it more impossible for it to just come from nothing. So right now we're maybe at a, you know, one polymer when a cell's like a hundred billion atoms working together as intricate machinery. And even for those processes needs that. So we're not going in the direction of your favor. Well, we are. That's why the over time, more and more people become atheists and materialists and less and less become religious because that was something else on the CIA website has about Marxist. Um, Marxist. It says, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. I'm not, I can I'm not a Marxist. Read it. No, yeah, no, no, I, don't, I disagree with Marxism. The also. metaphysics of Marx was materialism. That's nice. The, the metaphysics of <laughs> the metaphysics of Hitler was polytheism. So what? Maybe uh, so. But it is more relevant. of an ideology, like worldview type of thing. It doesn't mean that it's um, like the correct. It's, it's going to get us anywhere. Yeah, the people who believe in ideology is completely irrelevant to the truth of the ideology. Con congratulations, but. Again, the point here is that when you say God explained something, you haven't actually given an explanation. You've just simply said he used God magic. How has God when not I given an explanation? You have not. Did, you, yours does not give an explanation. So my explanation is, is here is a physical process that produces each of the steps, and we discover parts of them. Yours I've is asked you questions God magic. That, I've asked you questions about those, and you, you have not answered them, such as how did we get activated nucleotides on early Earth? That's like the I can, beginning. I can say level. physics magic if you like, and that's a better explanation than yours. So, so well, yeah, say, it is actually. What? Because it's going to take some type of intervention. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, so if there's some unknown process that we don't know about, one of the steps we haven't discovered yet, and you want to say God magic explains this process. Now, I can just say okay. quantum magic explains this process. Those are both bad explanations. They don't explain anything. They're just saying some other thing we don't know about, some greater unknown explains the smaller unknown. That's a worse problem that makes an explanation worse. What makes an explanation better is when you say this one thing is a result of other things that we've already discovered exist. So if you're saying there's this process that we know exists and it can produce that, and then we discover it doing that, that would be an explanation. So saying that, how did corpuscles form for cells? And it's mm, it was done by RNA forming them on clay, and then we discover that process. That's an explanation. Saying God magic is not an explanation. Saying quantum mechanics magic is not an explanation. An explanation is when you take known physical processes or known processes that have been demonstrated to exist, and you combine those in such a way that can produce the effect and then see that effect. See the processes make that effect. So God magic is not an explanation, just like physics magic is not an explanation. Neither of us can say it magically did it. To have an explanation, you need a natural process that can okay, be Okay, well, tell me the process. So you say, um, in terms of abiogenesis, that an RNA molecule came together, right? That the nucleotides can just assemble. 
Sure. If they can just keep assembling, how would that have any sufficient genetic code? If if they're constantly uh, assembling, if because... nucleotides can just polymerize, say that an RNA wants to create itself. Well, in creating itself, it's going to have nucleotides randomly attaching to its creations. There's essentially going to be no genetic code. So, so if the nucleotides bond randomly, most of them won't self-replicate. In order to self-replicate, they need a very particular pattern. And so if they bond in lots of different ways and 90% of them don't self-replicate, the ones that do self-replicate will replicate and then take over. So, okay. So you're assuming process. that an RNA is can form itself. Um, well, no, I'm assuming that nature can form an RNA, didn't create itself. Okay. okay. So then if nucleotides keep adding onto there, then how can it ever fold and, and create itself if it's constantly randomly assembling nucleotides of RNA? And how does it have any significant genetic code? Okay, so one, they don't all happen at once, so it's not infinitely many nucleotides get slapped on the end at all time. They It happens at a time period. So say a nucleotide gets put on the end of an RNA, then there's going to be some amount of time until the next one happens, and during that time it has the ability to fold because there's a break between the time it's bonding, which can then change the shape and orientation of the RNA. And while this process is happening, some will fold in such a way that it will have no benefit and that organism, that RNA molecule, will cease to function and will die and break apart from other acids. And one that but does have a benefit. But if nucleotides are always adding on, then how do we ever even have a genetic code? Again, because they're There's not no always... There's no set code. They're just constantly polymerizing. So if you have a bunch of monkeys smacking on a typewriter, some of them will sell, spell things out and most okay, of them that's won't. Okay, not, that's not a sufficient um, analogy. Okay. What, what, anyway, so okay, I'm just trying to get your model because if you know the answer of abiogenesis, then many people would like to know. So you're saying an RNA molecule formed, and then it self-replicated itself, or what are you saying? Just yes. Okay. So an RNA molecule formed, and if it was a self-replicating combination, it would then self-replicate. How would it self-replicate if it's folded to be a ribozyme? Because well, then it would need to unfold. So the first RNA molecules wouldn't have been ribozymes. Ribozymes came millions of years after that. So that was like irrelevant. They wouldn't be a ribozyme. Like, what are you talking about? I'm just asking how the first life got started. So, so, so the first life didn't have ribozymes. RNA, then what? Uh, then they self-replicated and formed corpuscles. And then you have the self-replicating material inside of the corpuscles within replicate and create the first life. Okay, so did the first self-replicating ribosome replicate itself, or did it use a template from another ri ribosome? I'm sorry. It, it replicated RNA itself. Bond. So it randomly came together, okay. like in, in the wild, an RNA molecule bonded together, and that RNA molecule happens to be the kind of combination that would reproduce itself, which was completely random. And then it started to grab other nucleotides and put them in the order that would then reproduce itself, which is completely random. So the first one was formed on its own randomly with a whole bunch of other ones that were just gibberish and didn't reproduce themselves. But one of the billions that did, that were produced on their own, happened to be the correct order where it would self-reproduce and then it reproduced itself. But how does it self-reproduce if it's folded into a ribozyme form? Because it wasn't, it was not, the original RNA was not folded into a ribozyme form. Yeah, that that happened millions of years later. What, you don't need ribosome, ribosomes like initially to do the self-replicating. Like that, that's a different process. There's multiple different ways to do it. I think that's the process that you were alluding to earlier. What, what, no? Yes, ribosome is like a thing... You said a self-replicating RNA, and I'm asking, how did it replicate itself if it was folded? It, again, there are lots of different ways to fold it. It can be folded in many different ways. The way it is currently folded in our current cells and our current ribosomes is not the way it was folded when life currently originated. So yeah, the thing about it, if it's folded, how is it going to be transcribing itself? Because you can do that while it's still folded. It doesn't need to unfold unless it's folded in a inconducive That's pattern. That's not true. Yes, it is. Like. That's not true. I don't understand what you're not understanding. So I can fold a piece of paper in such a way that's a circle shape. It's a circle shape and it's folded. And then the circle shape can bond to other circle shapes just fine. 
There are certain patterns that if you folded it like an origami crane, it would not be able to combine with other things because it's very folded in a very inconducive pattern. There are some patterns of folding that it's very easy to pair with other things. So the fact that it's folded, just magically folding it doesn't mean once it's ever folded once, then it can no longer bond. That's not how it works. You can still fold it many times and it can still bond. Any kind of folding does not mean now can no longer bond with anything ever. It's not how folding works. So did it unfold itself to replicate itself? No, no, it can still fold and replicate. They can do both at the same time. Hmm. Just one RNA? Y yes. I, uh, what? Yes, obviously just one. That's crazy. Um, okay, so assuming that we have a bunch of RNA and it's just replicating itself and replicating other, um, making more RNAs, then what's the next step? Then, right? then what comes out? It could have that? been many different things. There are like a thousand different options there. There are many different ways that you could go to the next step. There's lots of different steps you could pick from. Well, if you have but a again, clue. But again, let's just, so my explanation there was better than God magic. What I just No, said it was, was not. Like, that was a horrible explanation. How is that not? That was even... absolutely horrible. We haven't even got past step to, step one. Okay, okay. So so tell me how what I just said is worse than God magic. Because you didn't even sufficiently explain the the, the first step need, needed for life. I what, what, your question was is how can RNA form and then self reproduce? So I answered that question, and it was better than God magic. How how in answering the question how no, can it's RNA not better form than and reproduce? How, because, how is it not better than God magic? That's because uh, uh, g giving you granted a reproducing RNA molecule, which is already a stretch, does not even get close to life. And that's that just wasn't a the question. answer. That wasn't, that wasn't the question. So you asked one question. How does RNA reproduce? My answer was, is it that can fold and reproduce at the same time? Yours is God magic. So how is God magic a better explanation of all because RNA I reproducing. explained how, how all parts of the cell would come about. Okay, but that doesn't matter. Again, we're, we want to focus on one thing. Matter. Saying, and, and you could not explain uh, if RNA was randomly polymerizing how it would sustain some type of code. If it's random, then it's going to randomly produce a code. That's, but it's not going to have like a, a code for itself if, if nucleotides are randomly polymerizing. On, if So you're saying that an RNA molecule came together through polymerization. But if that just happened randomly, then we would have no code to tra to keep, um, we would have no code because there would, it would just be nucleotides randomly adding on all the time. <laughs> if they're randomly adding on, they, then many of them are going to <coughs> randomly add on in a pattern, which is a code. No, every they're adding on to every one, so they're not sustaining any type of code. Uh, if they're adding on to every one, then there's going to be a pattern in some of them, which is going to be a code. There's no, there's no code. This is literally stochastic systems, uh, information theory, Shannon, Claude Shannon's 1958 paper, information theory and how information is formed is caused from a stochastic system creating a pattern. Randomness creates patterns. Yes, literally does that. Literally what means the information. Okay. And also I, I want you to take into account that uh, 10 trillion randomized RNA molecules are required as a starting point for the isolation of ribosomic, uh, ribosomic or binding activity in vitro. So this completely divorced <laughs> from the probable prebiotic situation. This is completely what, what does in vitro mean? Please, what, what does in vitro mean? Okay, th this is what it would not have had in vivo because we have no life yet. What does in vitro mean? What does the word mean? It means um, like out, outside, in a, in a lab, whatever you want to say. I can. Let me... Okay, what does that have to do with the statement, though? So, so you're, outside is close enough. It means outside of an organism. So, if there's in vitro fertilization or whatever, that means that there is an organism. And this, I know what it means. Is, okay, but uh, what, that means that means we already have a life form with trillions of cells. So your statement is literally contradicting what you're saying. So obviously, if you already have an organism that's made up of lots of cells, then yes, you're obviously going to have to have some kind of multicellular combination of things to fertilize that already existing. No, organism. this was it's an completely irrelevant. Done in a lab. This was an experiment done in a lab, 
and it would have said that this many needed need, would need um, RNA molecules will need to exist to have ribosomic activity. Um, and this is completely divorced from the probable prebiotic situation. And I've already, I've already addressed everything you've said. No, you haven't. You haven't given any sufficient answers. And and by the way, I want to come back to one thing with the how did the quantum field create the uh, universe? Quantum did, fluctuations in the exact same way that uh, the Casimir effect did. I already answered the question. But again, let's just go back to the ribosomes. You keep okay, mentioning ribosomes because you have you no didn't idea explain what they are. Casimir effect. Yes, I did. Here is a natural process of a thing that can cause this exact effect we see that would create the universe. But ribosomes did not come about at the origin of RNA. Ribosomes evolved after RNA was already there. Ribo there no ribosomes. Ribosome. What? Ribosome is spelled R-I-B-O-S-O-M-E. Ribosome. Ribosome. I don't know how that's spelled. Okay, so... And why did you say ribozyme? Because ribozyme is, is like, a, like a type of lime drink. Ribosomes <laughs> evolved after RNA. Thousands, millions of years after RNA existed. Then ribozyme, ribosomes came about. No, so, ribozymes... <clears throat> yeah, that... It, okay. Ribozyme is something else. You guys ready to go to the Q and A? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we can go ahead. All right, thank you guys so much for that spirited conversation. So, the first question we have comes from uh, Lin Yen Chin from for ten dollars Canadian, or uh, yeah, Canadian. Uh, why not call it atheist versus a theist? Is it the same reason why most people believe a part is just another way to type? a part instead of realize instead of the realizing the two things mean the exact opposite what's the question yeah that's it okay for five dollars from mitchell for um q4 question for t jump was your blonde hair tips intelligently designed or are they degrading hair follicles at random random pretty much because they were actually pink all right, from Lin Yen Chin for five dollars says T Jump, please learn how to use your nose for breathing and stop smacking your lips as punctuation. Stop for being your mean. No. no, no, all right. Uh, ten dollars from Stupid Whore Energy. Uh, proteins could be formed by random joining of the GADV amino acids through repeated wet drying processes without involvement of RNA. Microspheres form via wet drying processes. There you have a protocell. Protocell? Hold up. You just <laughs> described a protein and went to a cell. You know nothing about biology. That was hilarious. Protocell. That's hilarious. I can't believe people actually think that. Okay. Protein uh, kind of cell. Sorry. From Sentinel Apologetics for $2. Says... I'm sending this to say I love Stupid Whore Energy. So, Stupid Whore Energy, you have a fan out there. Uh, from Barry Barry for $10 says, I admire this creationist debater. A lot of theists aren't brave or honest enough to admit at the very beginning of a debate that all of their reasons for believing in things are completely fallacious. A fallacy, uh, just because there's a fallacy doesn't mean that your argument's wrong. That's called a fallacy fallacy. It doesn't mean the conclusion is wrong. Your argument, if there's a fallacy in your argument, your argument is definitely wrong, but the conclusion might not be wrong. Thank you. From Sentinel Apologetics for $2 says, Taylor needs a major crash course in epistemology. Uh, Chris G for four ninety nine says, Taylor, how does whatever T-Jump thinks about the origins of the universe help to prove your point in any way at all? You have the burden to prove your claim. Uh, well, he wouldn't even really, I don't even understand what he was saying, like how the quantum field. So in, in, the, in the using quantum theory to create a universe, um, usually there, I've heard scientists explain is there a, is a pre-existing universe and then it quantum tunnels something um, to create the Big Bang. But I've never heard of just quantum uh, field um, creating the Big Bang. There would have had to be something there, whether it's space time or something. It couldn't have just come from nothing. So I think his his 
explanation was very insufficient, and that's why I think mine was better. Ca I Casimir effect is Google. Google Casimir effect. It's a scientific thing. We've discovered it in the lab. We can observe it. Casimir effect. Google Casimir effect. All right. From Barry Barry for $10 says, Taylor, let's say that you're right and that a God made everything. What explanatory value does that offer? How did he do it? Through what mechanisms? Using what materials or energy source? Be specific. Okay. So the first part of the question was, how does that explain anything? Yeah, the God um, magic thing that I brought up. Yeah, that okay. So it obviously gives a better. It explains everything. I mean, I, us trying to ponder um, God is like an ant trying to ponder our minds. It's just not going to happen. But I've already given an explanation to how He created the cell. I literally uh, mentioned parts of the cell that had to be created, um, and then the Big Bang. Uh, let there be light. Bang. Like that's, but it's better than from nothing. That's the nothing coming from nothing is hysterical. No one believes that in physics. Okay. Though. So by uh, the way, I don't see, I know about the Casimir effect, but whenever particles uh, randomly come about in um, space, that does ha, like, what does this have to do with the big bang? So virtual particles popping into existence, like, oh, I don't know, the big bang, all the particles in the big bang. That's. So through quantum tunneling, you mean? Because sort of. if, it, if it was, if there was no universe there, Yes, there was no fields. space. There was no. There was no space for there to be fluctuations. There was nothingness. Space is an emergent property from quantum fields. Quantum fields exist prior to space and have fluctuations, which created space. Okay, so what is quantum? What 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 is quantum field? It's a vector space containing the fundamental blocks of reality. Okay, so is that a, like a form of a universe? It's not just nothingness. No, it's it's not nothingness. It's it's, it's something. Okay, so field. you believe that's that's existed forever over God? Yes, yes. Well, I don't think that's a better explanation. And and, oh, and it can't be proved. Okay, from Contrary in 420 for five dollars says, "What is the materialist explanation for consciousness, as it cannot be examined without itself, cannot be removed or added as independent variable?" Yet, so the explanation of consciousness yeah. is most likely a physical process that is synonymous with the material life. things, processes occurring in your brain that we will discover in the future. We Weak. haven't done it yet. Better than God magic. Gotcha. Actually, it's not. <laughs> uh, from 499, from Keith says, for Taylor, since you avoided the question on Twitter, uh, were the ancient Greeks justified in believing Zeus was the best explanation for lightning? For light, like lightning. lightning. Oh, for lightning. Yes. Hmm. I guess so. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, you heard so it here first, they're, folks. They're, they're, they're justified in thinking that all of this couldn't have been here, including lightning from nothing. Gotcha. Uh, from pseudo Nim for ten dollars says T jump. If Taylor gives a better explanation to match reality against your version of reality where anything is possible to rule out any truth in what you say does she win not because god but you're wrong period that is not a coherent question like not literally everything is possible in my universe it's more likely that everything uh, yeah, is possible so in the god universe i deserve an award for when it, reading that right because it's not possible to have like a round square in my universe so not anything is possible clearly that's sad <laughs> sad that you can't have a round square explains everything that's crazy can't have a round good? square explains everything are we good okay all right from bubble gum gun for two dollars says at t jump denote a field as what it is specifically what didn't, didn't you mean just a field you want me to google definition field physics uh scalar vector or tensor that has a value for each point. That's there you go. From Stupid Whore Energy for $5 says, In a protein world, GADV amino acids, ribose, nucleotides, and oligonucleotides could be synthesized by immature GADV proteins. Um, in, a, in a prebiotic world, there's no proteins. Right. I mean, no. 
Yeah, they can be syn synthesized by proteins, but where's the proteins at? There's no life yet. Gotcha. From Mango Tea for $2. Uh, you want to add something? No, I was just saying like uh, for, pro for a protein to be there, that's already a huge jump. And I don't know if we can explain a, a, f a folded working protein being there from even amino acids at this point. So, Gotcha. Uh, from Mango T for two ninety nine says T jump. Let's debate on does God exist. Pay me. Uh, Stupid horror energy five dollars says the first non specific uh, anti codon uh, stem loop anti c anti c s l t r n a transfer r n a was uh, formed during uh, repeated random synthesis degradation cycles of oligonucleotides. What what about the annealing problem? If they were if they were um, together, how did they ever kneel to create more? Yeah, what about that superhor energy? Uh, Mango T for seven ninety nine says T jump. Why do you love your girlfriend? Because of your brain or because of your soul? Are you saying that a bunch of n neutrons firing caused you to love? Yes, neutrons, neutrons, neutrons. neurons. No, neutrons. Uh, Pseudonym for $2 says, at T-Jump, how do you start? We had RNA when it formed. What? How do you start? We had RNA nope, when it we're formed. moving on. Uh, it's a beautiful <laughs> thing to love, Jesus. Yeah, you never I'm gave not. an explanation for how RNA formed. You just said started RNA kind of. It formed naturally through natural processes of the molecules oh, yeah. bonding okay. together. There you go. How do we get activated nucleotides? Natural processes. And form if they randomly in a, bonded, then they would have no code. That's probably false. Like literally, no, all information no, has false. code from stochastic, which means random mm, definition of random. Shannon Claude information theory paper, nineteen fifty eight. You want to check it yourself? Not sure. <laughs> okay, it's a beautiful thing to follow Jesus for five dollars. Canadian says T jump is slowly morphing into his chair. <laughs> Don't be mean. I don't uh, know if that was mean. It was just a meme. It's a meme. I think it's just a statement of fact. Uh, Chris G for 199 says, how is God did it more valid than I don't know? Because we, the, the processes needed, for example, for a cell have many paradoxes, like the water paradox, the oxygen paradox, along with many others that would prohibit life from forming. That's the, I don't know. He's asking why is saying, I'm not I saying don't... we haven't figured out yet. We know how the cell works and we know what would have been needed. But if, for example, they were all put together, they would have turned into uh, inorganic materials. So, so the question was, is, okay, so we know it's really complicated. Your okay. answer is God did it. How is saying God uh, did it? I, better... In my opinion, I'm saying it's impossible. It's impossible. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Okay. From Stupid Whore Energy for $10 says, Molecules like fatty acids can assemble into membranous vesicles and are present in uh, carb no. carbonaceous meteorites. Membranous vesicles were abundant in prebiotic environment. Okay. And if there was a membrane around the cell and it had no transport proteins, how would anything have got in, out, in and out the cell? So essentially it just be a, you know, say that it is encapsulated, even though fatty acids um, don't do good in the acidic environment that RNA would have needed to be in. Suppose it did survive, right? And it encapsulated it. Then how is it, how is it ever, how is anything ever going to get transported in and out without the transport proteins? What does that have to do with the question? That, that, I'm just telling you what's wrong with it. Like you're telling me, oh, well, this exists. I'm telling you the problems. There was not even a question, actually. Uh, gotcha. Did From no Notion Slave for four ninety nine says, God is the most self evident explanation. Fall of these intricate, beautiful systems. Naturally unfolding is even more evidence of the genius of nature. Got it. Magic God powers. Well, he has materialism explains nothing. Science God. <laughs> that explains nothing. That's his God. I think fall was of all. Yeah. Uh, 60 second skeptic for $20 Canadian says for both 
for both guests. If we don't have alternate universes to reference this one to, how do we find hallmarks of design? Isn't our sample size one? Uh, wait, can you repeat the question? Sure. For both guests, if we don't have alternative universes to reference this one to, how do we find hallmarks of design? Isn't our sample size one? Right. Um, how do we find hallmarks of design? Well, that's just, that goes to the multiverse theory because, um, you know, everything's so fine tuned and worked out so perfectly that there must've been multiple universes and we just happen to be the one that works. So, I mean, I, I think that anything pertaining to multiverse theory is just trying to make up for the fine tuning problem. That literally wasn't the question. The question was okay, asking. Well, we have a sample how, size of one. Yeah. But yeah, there so are the question, too many multiverses, and I'm saying I don't agree no, with that. No, they're not. They're, they're saying they that in order to try to have evidence of design, you would need to have multiple different kinds of universes to compare the different probabilities of the way the universe would come about naturally to know if one was specifically designed by uh, a designer to be some offset or separate from the way it just naturally occurs without a designer. The probabilistic argument is that if you only have one universe, maybe this is the most likely way everything would come about from deterministic forces without a designer. So unless you have a lot of universes where it didn't occur, you couldn't say design because this is a way the most likely outcome that we know about through natural processes. Well, physicists have calculated um, the probability. We don't need to look at other universes and the probability is astronomically low. If the laws of physics can change, which we don't know if they can, that's the point. No, not with your materialistic world. They definitely can't then the probability would be 100% that we'd have life in our universe. Okay. Just continue. Okay. From Stupid Horror Energy for $5 says, uh, protonoids microspheres divide when placed under a high osmotic pressure, just like modern cells. A protonoid? I believe protonoid it's Protonoid what? I didn't have not read that word out loud in my life. Okay. We can, you can, I, I mean, I can look it up. I've never heard of a protonoid monosphere. It's literally protonoid. Um, coffee breath for 199 says for both, what is a ribosome versus a ribosome? Can you answer to jump? Yeah, a ribosome is a certain type of RNA, and a ribosome is the process in a cell that does stuff. Gotcha. Uh, from Mitchell for two dollars says, "Is origami random?" No, origami. Yeah, <laughs> is origami random? Some of is it. Is origami random? Is origami? No, origami is not random. It needs a. I, I would say it needs a designer, somebody to design it. What do you think, T Jump? You found a piece of paper. Of course, of course it can be random. It? Like literally, people who do red do origami can randomly. But that's fold the person paper. doing it. But what if you found a paper folded in origami? So, so random doesn't do mean that somebody made that or it hum actually humans can do it. random things too. Humans, well, so can, can God. I'm just saying, if you found origami on the floor, wouldn't you think a person folding it instead of just happen to fold? Yes, because there's no natural processes that produces origami. If there are natural there's no processes, natural processes then... that produce life, yes, there are. All of the evidence no, shows cannot, that there we are. We can't even get a cell, a, a cell produced in the lab. Again, because no, no. origami, we have evidence of people. We know people exist in reality. And if we see a thing of origami and there are no natural processes that produce it, then we can infer human yeah, We see something so like life that has we, no we, natural we, processes either. Because there's no evidence of God existing at all, then That's you can't true. say you God created life. You just were refuting God. So what? you're refuting so, so, evidence. Yes, because it's garbage evidence. So you refute it. Yeah. That's literally how it works. If you saw but the difference, the it? difference between origami and God is that origami has evidence of its designers, humans. We know they exist. Mm -hmm. God has no evidence he exists, and so you can't use him as an explanation of things. Do you believe in ghosts? And what if you saw one? No. You know, what if you saw a ghost? Would you believe in it then? No, I'd probably think yeah, it was a delusion, probably. like any rational person. But what, was, what if it was on camera and it was recorded? Probably still just a natural process we haven't discovered yet. Are you kidding Even, me? There's, no, there's, there's lots of this happening. People have ghosts on camera all the time, and then they're discovered to not be ghosts. It's a pretty common process. Like 
So if you saw a UFO, the correct explanation is you're probably making stuff up. It's probably not a UFO, even if it's on camera. Yeah, but if you saw it and it was on camera and it touched you and there was witnesses, would you still would you believe it then? Probably not. No, I need no, novel testable would, so there's predictions. nothing that would make you believe it. No, novel, so testable, novel testable predictions. Not exactly. you saw it. We so anecdotal fallacies? No. Science is God. Science is how we differentiate imagination it's from reality. God. You will Dif not accept yeah. anything even if you see it. No, I don't worship science. It's just a method to differentiate imagination you from reality. You have a lot of faith in it. Anyway. No, I, I use induction, not faith. So I have no faith in anything. All right. Uh, from $2 from Matsoro. Uh, Taylor, you did this on a dare, didn't you? On a dare? Yeah. Yeah, they asked me to come back and debate. So I said, whatever. I'll just come back. Uh, One more time. From KWNY Upstate. For ten dollars says, assuming the God being did all the things people claim to have witnessed it do, and not things it claimed to have done. Do that mean it created existence and is real God or just a powerful being? I mean, I think if it created everything, it'd be God. If I didn't really understand the question. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Uh, assuming the, the the God being, I think it was if he did everything that people claimed it did when they saw God, like helped them find their car keys or whatever. But none of the stuff in the Bible does that mean it would be God or just evidence of like a really powerful alien messing with people? Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, are you waiting on me to answer? If you understood the question. Mm. If you don't want to, we can just move on. I, I kind of didn't understand. I don't think that your interpretation. Okay. Uh, from Samir Farsane for five dollars says, "If we find an assumed new island and we find a log cabin in it, would you assume it's a wild house? If not, how do you assume everything else is?" Uh, the only reasonable time you can infer design is if you already have evidence of the designer. So if we found a log cabin and we know humans make log cabins, then you can infer it's a human-made log cabin. Uh, if there's no evidence of the designer, then you can never infer design. So like if we discovered a tesseract on a beach, you could never infer design from that um, because there's no evidence of anything that could design such a thing. So the only times you can infer design is if you have evidence the designer actually exists beforehand. And uh, from Garade de San for $5 says, the minute we agree that something can come from nothing, there's no need for a creator, right? Because then something always existed. No. Well, like if, if something could come from nothing, then first there would have to be nothing. So there would not have always been something. But you're saying there would have always been something. Yes. Uh, no one in physics thinks there was absolutely a nothing that something came from. That's not a thing in physics. We always, there's something that always existed. Yes. But, but uh, the multiverse thing uh, breaks the law, the second law of thermodynamics. No, it doesn't. Literally, Literally no one in physics thinks it that. Does. No, um, it doesn't. You, you don't even, do you even read? Like, because, and same thing with the, the uh, quantum mechanics. Like, that <laughs> great uh, <laughs> materialistic view. No. Literally yes, none, does. Of, none and of especially the, the multiverse. None of the consensus views in physics oh break God. the laws of physics. That's no, literally of, opposite of what they do. Of materialism. There's no laws of materialism. The laws of physics, like the second law of thermodynamics and entropy, is not broken by the multiverse. No. Yeah, it is. Broken. <laughs> How? P publish a paper on that. Because, like revolutionize because, physics. Because entropy increases over time. Which has how does that violate uh, the multiverse? I don't know. Why don't you go read the scientific the scientific paper? I have the scientists agree it doesn't. No, no scientist thinks the multiverse violates the second law of thermodynamics. That's your claim. I don't know. And there's no that? evidences that like new universes are being created in ours, or there would be some type of like background radiation or some fluctuations in uh, like the the um, background radiation. What new universe is yeah, created that, in our like, universe? There's, there's there's no evidence that, like, if, if if universes were hypothetically being created in this universe, there would be some type. It would leave some type of mark. 
Yes, if new universes were created in our universe, which is not what the multiverse says. But yes. Multiverse is like a religion. I mean, to think that a multiverse <laughs> no, has been no here one worships all it. along is more radical than God. Yes, it is. No. Because how not did the really. first universe come about? That still doesn't mess uh like answer the creation problem. If there was a multiverse, if multiverse means there wasn't there was none of them. There was never a first universe. They're infinite in the past, and that's still okay, less so you ridiculous think these than multiverses the God. have infinitely existed, but not God. Okay, that's a stretch. Yeah, yeah yes. A thing that we the have evidence for difference. is more plausible than a non-physical sky daddy no, that has hard. a bunch of magical properties. No, no because really okay, well then at the big bang, how didn't the big the big bang theoretically should have ended at the beginning? No, okay, for the, example, the in, matter in the and matter problem. In the multiverse, the Big Bang is one of many. It's not the origin of the multiverse. Okay. Well, there's problems with the Big Bang itself. <laughs> and, and if you think that, uh, then you don't know anything about physics. Okay. Well, tell me about the an matter and antimatter problem. How is it solved? We haven't discovered where the antimatter is. That's that's. There's no like problem there. It's just like, oh, we just don't know where it is. Like, okay. Then you don't know. I mean, then you're just not right. There is a problem. <laughs> the antimatter problem is that we don't know no, where I the antimatter is. That's, that's all. That's I mean, it. There's, that's just not true. That's literally the problem. The problem is, is that we know more about where the standard matter is and we don't know where the antimatter is. That's the problem. We just don't know where it okay. is. That's, and have you heard, whole... heard about the problem with at the Big Bang? It should, should, should have theoretically came back in, but then uh, no. dark energy. Okay, well then I've read Goose, more about the Big Bang than you have. Guth's early universe inflation uh, explains that it had a rapid rate of expansion in the early universe. There's no, the amount of matter we have would not have caused it to collapse. Like, no, what are you even talking about? Then you, yeah, okay. Well, then you need to know parts. But there is, there is <laughs> problems with Big Bang that we haven't worked out. You're acting like there isn't any. Are you going to stick to that statement? Yes, there. there that okay. is the consensus in physics that the Big Bang happened, okay. and that is far got the Big Bang all worked God. out, guys. There's no no problems there. No, no. no you don't need to have everything worked out. It's just so anything there, worked out is better than God. Not everything's worked out, right? Yeah, we don't have answers to everything, obviously. Exactly. So then don't, don't say what, is, do. what is that? What do you even like? Literally, that's not an argument. Like, we don't have every answer to every question ever. Ha ha. Congratulations. I'm, just, I'm talking about significant problems. Significant problems. Not just like, oh, yeah, like, you know, what is this pigeon called? Why, or did, God, why did God drown all of the babies? That's a, that's a significant problem. We're not debating well, God. All right. God has uh, problems, though. No. Well, I think that we've uh, probably already passed the 30 minutes. I forgot to set the timer, uh, to be honest with you guys. Uh, but um, we do have a few more questions. Do you guys want to get out of here? Or yeah, we can to... answer. To jump? I don't care. Okay. Uh, from Travis Statham. And uh, if you guys have any more Super Chats, we're not going to um, guarantee any more reading. This is Samir Farsam. That'll be the last one uh, that I can guarantee. Uh, I won't ask any more uh, of the guys here tonight. Uh, thank you. Uh, from Sentinel Apologetics uh, sent $2 to laugh out loud a lot. Uh, Samir Farsam sent $5 to say if we assumed uh, no, where I read that one. Um, Travis Startham said $2. Taylor, can you read out loud the Holmesian fallacy wiki? I doubt that you'd want to do that. Or do you? <laughs> I, I, I mean, y'all can continue. I don't know it off the top of my head. It's a statement that, uh, what is it? If every possible thing, yeah. go ahead. Okay. I think that, I think that my results actually, I, it came up with ad hominem, but I tried to type in Holmesian fallacy. Anyway, what does it mean? Uh, it's like the famous statement from Sherlock Holmes that, uh, he's using the process of an el elimination fallacy. It's a fallacy that occurs when someone explanation is believed to be true on the basis that alternative explanations are impossible. And that's your explanation. Like God's impossible. So science must be true. Right? No, no. So it was when you said that uh, life coming about is impossible. Therefore God, that was because I never said God was impossible. Well, they wait, I, the fallacy can go both ways. Well, I never said God was impossible. Okay. Uh, from Stupid Whore Energy for $10 says, all GADV polypeptide chains containing GADV amino acids, roughly at one-fourth each, should be folded into similar water-soluble 
globular structure, uh, anneal D's nuts. <laughs> okay, so the protein, um, if the if proteins, um, you're talking about protein folding, I, I haven't heard of the Gadian, but um, then they would essentially just be clumps and not really significant. But you're assuming that there's a protein already, and that's a big assumption that a protein's just there. I know proteins can can fold themselves, but doesn't mean it'll be into anything useful. They're all just folding; it probably will turn into nothing useful, nothing fruitful. And yeah, well, you didn't give me the annealing, annealing problem answer, so. Gotcha. And uh, for two ninety nine, Mango T wants to be your boyfriend, Taylor. And moving on, Stupid Whore Energy for five dollars says microspheres can incorporate passively chemical compounds with a low molecular weight. Try to keep up. I'm okay. sorry, I missed that. You can. Uh, Mitchell for $2 says, T-Jump, glasses were randomly designed, fools. It's true. They actually <laughs> were. They were random bins of glass that we didn't know about and looked through them like, oh, I can see. They were randomly designed initially. All right. Notion Slave for four ninety nine <laughs> says, T-Jump looks at his girlfriend and thinks, not beautiful enough. Better explained by random chance. Can't be a painter like God. Yeah, evolution explains it. And Samir Farsane for five dollars says, "If only one in a billion attempts for RNA works, how come we didn't discover a single one of the other nine hundred and ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine that didn't? Or is it nature? Or is nature done trying? Because life is everywhere now, and it consumes all kind of biotic material, and so if another one was formed, it would likely be eaten by all of the stuff we see around us that did survive. So if there was a new RNA molecule that came about today, it would get consumed by all of the gigantic bacteria around that eats everything. Are all right, RNAs well, that's less. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, are the RNAs is on our hands? But anyway. All right. Well, that's less of our questions. You guys want to say goodbye to the audience real quick? Thank you for being here. <laughs> Probably a dumpster fire, but it's whatever. I had fun. I, I wouldn't classify this as a dumpster fire. It was a pleasant conversation. No J Dyer. Yeah, That's it good. was interesting. Yeah, definitely I enjoyed worse. it. Check out the Atheist Church fundraiser. Give me money so I can buy an apartment building for the Atheist Church. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both so much for uh, being here. Thank you to the moderators in the chat. Thank you, James, for making this platform. Thank you to the audience, everybody who sent in super chats and elevated the conversation. Uh, and once again, thank you to the, the debaters who are the lifeblood of the show. Uh, like it if you loved it. Share it if you want to spread it. And subscribe as we have many more debates coming your way. Our speakers are linked in the description. Check them out. Do it now. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. And remember, keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. Have a great night.